Hello everyone, how are you today? Yeah, alrighty. Uh, I'm Columbus, uh, convention coach I this year, and I have a reputation in the community for being a Dini linguist. Uh, like everyone else, I pretty much first saw the Dini language in Riven, and I was intrigued, and I looked up online and found that it's not just substitutes for A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it's actual different sounds, like one for ch and one for a versus a versus a, and even then it wasn't uh, English words, it was actually a complete language with its own grammar and syntax and everything, and even after that it wasn't stupid things like hi mom or this game made by Rand and Robin or whatever, it was actual things that mattered in game, like in the the spinning room early in Riven, there's things where it says, we thank our Lord again for giving us the formula to make the ink, and things like that. It's stuff that you don't need to solve the puzzles, but it just enriches the experience to me to know what it says. And there's even occasionally some Easter eggs, like in Riven, in the classroom. One bit of Dini text a lot of people don't see is on the spherical lamps, and it says, to gen panets, which literally translates as, in gen we trust. So Dini, it's just kind of interesting to read it in Riven and Uru and other places, and it's just fun. And who here uh, likes using the Dini numbering system for anything? And it's just fun. It's silly. Other people wonder what it is. So I'm just going to have a little Dini language lesson for you all. Before we do that, I have some packet handouts. So... So just kind of follow along with me. Uh, I might not have enough packets for everyone because printing things is expensive. <laughs> but share if you can. Or if you don't really care about having a packet, let someone else have it. So just follow along with me as I take you through things and teach you the basics of the Dini language. Let's go next. Okay, we'll start with numbers, which a lot of you know already, then in bit on the letters, and then mostly with the grammar, and then with vocabulary, and some resources so you can learn on your own. Okay, you all know the Dini language, or numbers, are based off of really one through four simple strokes. Then you just rotate those four numbers 90 degrees counterclockwise to form 5, 10, 15, and 20. Down a bit more. <laughs> so, one beat, whoops, not that far. There we go. 1 becomes 5, 2 becomes 10, 3 becomes 15, 4 becomes 20. Down a bit more. And then you just overlay the normal numbers 1 through 4 over the rotated numbers to f do 6 through 9, 11 through 14, 16 through 19, 21 through 24. So there is some definite repetition, but they end up looking very distinctive and fairly easy to figure out. And down a bit more. The number 25 is showing up weird here, but it's normally an X or with place math instead of a 1 in the tens place and a 0 in the ones place like we have. It's a 1 in the 25s place and a 0 in the ones place. Next. It can, you can easily visualize uh, what the numbers look like with this grid. Ooh, zoom out. Nice. <laughs> with a normal 1 through 4 and then the 5, 10, 15, 20 and just overlaying kind of like a battleship grid. And you can see the patterns in the columns and rows of how they're the different numbers are similar to each other. Uh, as we go, if anyone has any questions, by all means, raise your hand. Questions are very good. Let's go next. So be best way to learn the numbers is in Riven. If you haven't learned Dini by playing with the Workman, Work Hangman toy, what's wrong with you? It's awesome. <laughs> it's creepy, but it's awesome. <laughs> Okay, speaking the numbers, uh, 0 through 4 is run, fa, bri, sen, tor. And the other numbers, you abbreviate those numbers and then add the Dini word for and, or, which is ga, and then the next word, the next number. So 5 er, becomes vat, you shorten it to va, and then 6 is va ga fa, instead of vat ga fa, 5 and 1, it's a shortened version. Va ga fa, va ga bri, va ga sen, va ga tor. Down a bit more. And same with 10 through 14. Nevu becomes ne, negafa, negabri, negas, and negator. 15 through 20, hibor, higafa, higabri, higasen, higator. 20 through 24, rish, rigafa, rigabri, rigasen, rigator. So you just abbreviate 1 through 4, 
and add on the rest. Next, for higher numbers and place math, like we have the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, they have the 25s, 625s, 15,625s, and so on. 25 times 25 times 25. Becomes very compact. Down a bit more. So instead of 100,000, 10,000, they have si, ra, lan, mel, blo. So with that, down a bit more, you can speak the numbers up to 244,140,624, which is kind of the equivalent of 999,999, blah, blah, blah. And the word for a number is hair. So the letters, for there are a few unique sounds. There's a specific a as an apple, an uncommon sound, but it is distinctly different from a or a or any other ones that we use the letter a for. There's a ch. And then the two different uh, th sounds, th and th. In English, we use the same two letters, but in linguistics, they do a th and a dh. Then Denis has a separate s sound that's actually at the start of a number of words. There's no j sound, like in seizure. It's either j or z. And then the alphabet itself is basically a cursive version of the uh, numbers. It takes a bit of getting used to, and you have to make sure your handwriting is good because they'll blur together otherwise. But you just connect it all together with more looping, curving strokes, and you get the alphabet. There are a few extra letters. There's more than 25 letters, and they just take the apostrophe and use it as a diacritic to mark. So you add that to some of the normal letters, and you get the extra letters. About 11 of those. The punctuation, there's what we call an apostrophe, although in the linguistic term is a schwa. It's kind of halfway between a, a grunt and an uh, sort of a uh. And then there's a period, which is used to begin all sentences, even questions and exclamations. And then a dash, which looks mostly like a dash, except a little curved. And we could use more punctuation, but we don't have it. The closest thing we have to other punctuation is back years ago, probably like 15 years ago, uh, Cyan had some group put out this website called Riven Elementary, where there were these addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division symbols that are not canon, but it's gone, and the only person I think who even has it anymore is Ryan Plus from Australia. He's like, put it together again, and one of these years he's going to present it when he comes to America again. So uh, a few last minute notes before we get into things on writing. It's, it's like I said, it's cursive variant of the numbers. Good handwriting is important. You want to think of the letters as being made up of what we call bases and flags. The bases are the, yes, I see questions. The punctuation is just the same as in English, a period for period, apostrophe for apostrophe, a uh, hyphen for a dash. The tricky thing is the numbers in typing. To type the number for 11, you do shift 1, number 2, shift 2, number 3, shift 3. It's a little complicated, but you just have to figure out what's all mapped out for the numbers. Yes? Are you saying we have no examples or evidence of the Denis equivalent of a question mark or an excl exclamation point? No, nothing like that. No quotation marks, no parentheses, nothing like that. It'd be nice, but we don't have any uh, other punctuation. All right. But yeah, the, in the Denis language community, we talk about the letters being made up of bases and flags. The bases are like the numbers turn 90 degrees, and the flags, the other numbers laid on top. You basically write all of the bases like cursive without lifting your pen, and then go back and do the flags or other strokes and the apostrophes and punctuation. So let's go next. Question. Um, yeah, you, you were saying that the Dunny letters are cursive variants of the numbers, and I'm not seeing that. Can you explain yeah, let's that? go back up to the alpha, where it shows the alphabet number letters. Right here, in order, like, ignore... Like on the first one, the letter for V, ignore the curve strokes, and it's just a single stroke, like the number one. The letter for T, there's a curve stroke like this, like the number two. With the S, it comes like this, like the number three, which is an angle. And then uh, look at J, and it goes up like this, like the four. It takes, it's not like exactly cursive, 
and it takes a little time to get used to it, but it, maybe try writing the numbers and letters right next to each other, and you'll start to see it as you get a feel for what they look like. There actually is in one of the fonts a variant on Z. You'll see on the l letter for Z near the end, it's missing the little hook at the start. There's a version of the font that has that hook, but it's removed in one font. There's the official Denny font, and then there's a fan-made one that's essentially the same. There's a Denny font and Denny script, but they're just as good as the other. All right, let's head back down. Where are we going? Oh, uh, yeah. Next one, some grammar. We'll do a bit on language structure, verbs, pronouns and possessive, questions, converting particles, other grammar. Word order is, like English, subject, verb, object. So, like, the guildsman wrote an age. Guildsman is the subject, which verbs an object. Guildsman wrote an age. It's the same in uh, Denis. Telam is guildsman. Koselen is wrote age, ersev. Retelam, koselen, ersev. So, some languages are, like, totally different, and it can be really hard to translate or wrap your brain around it, but it's the same as in English, so it makes it fairly easy. Uh, unlike English, adjecti adjectives usually follow nouns. Like we, s in English, we say the big dog. In English or Dini, it would be the dog big. A lot of languages are like that. So the Dini, the Dini cavern or the cavern Dini, regalpo Dini. But with some things that are very important, adjectives come first. Like uh, regalo hevti mean, means the great words. With normal Dini grammar, it would be the words great re. Hefty garo, but important things you put the adjective first. I'm not sure why, but that's the way it is. <laughs> yes, languages always have exceptions. I yes. <laughs> the structure of Dini is very heavily uh, based around verbs. Use uh, prefixes to designate the tense, past, present, future, or all the mixes. And then suffixes determine the person who is doing the verb. So some basic verbs, uh, the infinitive, like I am, I speak, anything, is also the first person singular. So if you say I am, or if you say is, you're saying I am. If you say speak, you're saying I speak. The I is just implied in Dene. So we have uh, is, or be, or I am, can, speak, mis, lived, sav, no, tagam, and there are two words for write, one for regular writing and one for the art of writing ages. The writing ages is sel, normal writing is gel. And then the suffixes for other people besides yourself, saying you, singular, suffix is m, he, she, or it is n, we is et, you, plural, is t, and they, plural, is eat. Scroll up a bit so we can see both those. So... Let's get make this a little more interactive. What would be the word for you know, singular? Call it out. Tagamem. Very good. Rambafasi. Rambafasi means very good. I'll be saying that if you get things right. What about we live? Savet. Rambafasi. How about they speak? Nisi, Ramafasi. So yeah, just attach the subjects to the verb to tell the tense. Let's scroll down. And there's different tenses. There's uh, basic past, future, and then there's progressive and perfect and all the combinations thereof. Scroll down a bit more. And tenses are really, really messed up in English. I still need to refer to my Denis notes to figure out what tense is because... It's, it just makes so much sense, the way it's done in Denis, but it's so mixed up in English. I just don't know how to do it. I just know what word to say in English. So there com the, for past tense, you combine the basic tenses. Past is ko. Progressive is do. So past progressive is kodo. Uh, perfect tense, which is like have, has, is like I have eaten, I have spoken, is la. So past, actually that, there's no combination there. Or past, progressive, perfect, whatever, codal. You just combine the various tenses. It's a little tricky. And same with pr present and future. So the word for, let's say, eat is reese. Will have been eating is bodo reese. 
will be eating boto rice. Had been eating koto rice. You just combine the various parts of the prefixes to denote the tense. So let's go down further. Oh, question. Raise your hands high if you have questions. <laughs> Have a um, normal thingy, like never mind. Just regular future tense. Yeah. I have that up in the basic tenses. Uh, top right, future is bow. Then you combine bow with all the other tenses for the three future other three future tenses on the bottom. Oh, question on the live stream. Yay, live stream is working. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, they are asking. Can it or they be used as a singular gender neutral pronoun? We're getting to pronouns. So yes. The but one problem with pronouns is we don't have words for he or she, just sort of a generic one, which is kind of annoying. But Rob well, probably has one in his Denny dictionary, but he hasn't given it to us yet. Any other questions before we move on? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so hoping, always hoping to get more Dini words. Um, is there anything with moods? Do we have any proof that there are moods in Dini? Subjunctive, active, any of that? Uh, I'm a little rusty on that part of linguistics, but I don't think so. We do have a decent amount of uh, language material, but still fairly limited, mostly just the basics. So let's scroll down to the next page. There we go, pronouns and possessives. Pronouns, uh, I or me, zu, you singular, shem, he, she, it, or they, singular, shen, we, set, you, plural, shemti, literally use, and they, sheet. One thing about the pronouns is they end essentially with the suffixes for the person. So the person suffix for you, singular, was m. The pronoun is shem. The suffix for he, she, it, they was n. The, the pronoun is shen. The suffix for we was et. The uh, s pronoun is set. So they're similar in that way. And then for possessives, it also uses uh, suffixes. Scroll down a bit. My is oi. Your singular is om. Again, ending with the m, just like the person suffix and pronoun. His, her, it. It's they, their, own, our is oat, your plural omi, and their plural os. So whether we're talking the uh, person suffixes, the pronouns, or the possessive suffixes, they tend to all share the same final letter to help you know which person you're referring to. So it helps you remember better rather than having to r memorize completely different things. All right, let's scroll down to the next part. For questions, it's worded exactly the same. You just say it with uh, an inquisitive voice. So like the phrase kenenatsu would be, it is ready. Unless you say like Keta did in Riven kenenatsu, that's saying, is it ready? It literally, it's it is ready, like confirm, is this ready? You just pronounce it different, and context, I suppose. The words for questions, how is though, what is cam, you know, the little thing over the A I used to mean that it's the Ah, as an apple sound, not ah. Who is literally what person or camrov? Where, what place or camto? When, what time, camgor? And we don't have the words for why and which, unfortunately. But most of them are based around the word cam, with the word for what. So let's scroll down. Converting particles between nouns and verbs and adjectives is used also with uh, suffixes. So verb to noun is tav. So speaker, speak becomes uh, mis is mistav. Or say ris, the word for eat, eater, I guess, would be ristav. Or right, uh, sel becomes seltan. Or tav, right? I'm mixing up things already. Yeah, that's I'm mixing up the next one. The next one is person, tan. So watch is mer, watcher is mertan, right? is gel, writer is gelton, or regular writing, or that's regular writing, writing ages is cell or selton. 
And adjective verb, basically like adding ing in English, is all. So create is marn, creating is marnal. Uh, adjective to noun is eth or th, depending on how it flows with the word before it. So safe is gets off, safety gets off. Noun to adjective is the uh, suffix ets. Rock is prad, rocky pradets. And adjective to adverb is esh or sh. So final is norif, finally norifesh. And the final one that we just got a couple years ago or so, noun to person, enta. So history is fenta, historian is fenta enta. Kind of rhymes there. So yeah, just to change from one type of word to another, just add suffixes. Did on other grammar, for possessive, four words, basically four versions of the word of. In English, the word of is a very broad general purpose word, but there's lots of different contexts. For personal possession is och, so like kor och, uh, book of kalamis, my book would be kor och kalamis. For non-personal relation, the word is tso, so I'm trying to think of what that would be, I don't know, but just non-personal relation is tso. Membership in a group is te, which depending on how it's used in English might mean of or with or by or in kind of a general purpose word from an English point of view. And then origin or composition f of or from is ma. So all variants on possessive and the word of in English. Prepositions, any, who, who here heard the growing up that a preposition is anything a squirrel can do to a tree? It can be on it, it can be under it, it can go around it, it can go through it. Those are prepositions. Those are with a suffix that can all end in a or can be abbreviated with an apostrophe. So around is na or n. At, by, in, with is te or te. For is ch or ch. From is me or me. On or upon is fe or f. I sound like I'm almost swearing here. <laughs> to is be or b, like bafasi, 225. So it's just a prefix that can be abbreviated with an apostrophe. And if it's before an article, the, the articles are a, an, or the. If it's right before that, you can y run it right into the word without any apostrophe. And the articles, uh, a, the indefinite is a or an, and the word is earth. So a book would be earth core, and you just run it together into the same word. The definite article is the or the, and in English, it's, or Dini, it's re. So the book, I made a typo here. It should be rekor, not earthcore. Earthcore, and run together in one word as well. The two articles can be at are attached to the word they, they proceed. Any questions so far? All righty, let's go. Plurals, like adding S onto the end of a word, is the suffix T. So books would be korti. Book is kor, books is korti. The word for cave is galpo, caves would be galpoti. To say the word sum, you basically say a uh, nouns. So a book would be a books or elth korti, which sounds really weird for English grammar, but it just eliminates the need for a separate word for sum. Uh, demonstrative is like this, that, these, those. And in Dini, it comes after the noun, not before as in English. So the word for this is met. This book would be book this or cormet. These, you would say nouns this. So these books would be books this or cortimet. And the word for those is moti. So those books, books those or cortimoti. And conjunctions, three words, and is ga. Or is palm, and but is rube. Important, simple but important words. And the last little thing with Dini is the imperative mood. To make it sound like you're commanding someone to do something, you add a ah onto the end of the verb. So speak is mis, you speak is misem, speak is misema. We see this in the first scene of Riven when Cho sees us in the cage, and he says, tagema, 
he's saying, give me. He says, Tagema Bazu Arakor, give me the book. And he steals our linking book. It's it's pretty decent. He just doesn't know much Dunny, and we're just staring at him blankly because the stranger doesn't know Dunny, so he's like, oh, I must have screwed it up. So yeah, just add ah onto the end of a verb, verb, and it makes it a command. Let's go down. So that's basic some vocabulary or uh, grammar, some simple vocabulary, uh, affirmative and negative. Yes is vola, no or not is ril. I don't know is ril tagam. The word no is tagam, so no, not no is ril tagam, and maybe or perhaps is chapo. Chapo. <laughs> some some basic pleasantries that you can use here at Mysterium. Uh, hello or goodbye is shara, literally means peace. So kind of like shalom in uh, Hebrew, used for hello and goodbye. I welcome you, singular. Taini shem. Taini means welcome. Shem is singular. Taini shemti is I welcome you, plural. The word for greet is tsunu, so greetings tsunu tavti. How are you, singular? Vokenem. How are you, plural? Vokenti. Getting a bit into the tenses. How have you been? Vo dolkenem. Have you been plural? Vo dolkenti. Scroll on a bit. I am good is ken ram. I am well ken ago. Thank you is chevashem. And thank you very much or thank you is chevashem bafasi. One thing I didn't write in here, but I'm sure a lot of you know, in English they don't have, or in Dini they don't have words for very. They basically measure things from 1 to 25. So really awesome would be awesome to 25. Kind of awesome would be awesome to 15. Not awesome at all would be awesome to 1. <laughs> and then the word for you're welcome is meur, literally pleasure. I put the hyphen in there so it doesn't look like mihur. It's meur, meur. So next, I have compiled a list of 10 Dini insults. <laughs> First one is one uh, we've seen like in, I think, Gen's journal and in Book of Dini. Arotan means outsider. It's used often derogatorily by the Dini who thought of themselves as better. The next one I got from Rao a couple years ago was originally in uh, the first draft of the Book of Atrus. When Atrus screws something up and Gen calls him an idiot or a fool or something, he was going to say it in Dini, Lenita. Uh, t simpleton, teneth, because te ten means simple, f makes it a purse, uh, an object. So teneth, ten not taneth, teneth. <laughs> I spit on you, torn for shem. <laughs> Get bent, aniyama nekesal. You're crazy, kenem zigla. I will destroy you, boruik shem. Oh, I scoffed. Eat, eat rocks. Risima Pradi. Die in a fire. Manchu ma tam. And my favorite one, roughly go to hell. Savama tresevoch jakuth. Which literally translates as live in the age of jakuth. Jakuth was the equivalent of the devil in the Dini religion. It's fun to say things that are really long in Dini when they should be this long in English. <laughs> And then I've included basic glossary. We can just skip through this mostly. Just I included all the words that I had in the lesson. Go a bit faster. And I added a few extra ones in there for you to find that might be useful, like Garo, great or mighty, or Para, great or large. Keep going down. I think there's three pages. Go faster. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and recite all these words for you. All right. And finally, some basic resources. The Dini Lingu Linguistic Fellowship is the main Dunny language group. Not too active anymore because there isn't more being released, and we lost our forums. We lost everything, <laughs> unfortunately. But there's still some great resources there, including uh, Rechurtan Dini, which means the Dini student. It's the most thorough set of Dini language lessons, a great upgrade from the old, old Guild of, Langu of Linguists lessons from back in 98. So definitely check that out. And finally, the, the dictionary by a fan named Christopher. He hasn't been active in years, but he still updates the dictionary every time we get new words. It's com absolutely complete, has references to what game or book and where we got the word from, and it's just a really awesome resource. 
So, uh, that's pretty much it I have. I could have gone slower, but whatever. Any qu Yes? I'm sure we can. I ran out. I only printed so many because printing is expensive, but I'm sure I can... I'm sure there's a way we can like link this on the Mysterium website. Probably. I have it as a word file, but I'm sure we can make it into a PDF. And like I said, the Rachur Tantani is an even more thorough set of lessons. There's some basic stuff on there too. And yeah. Any final questions? Yes. We don't. It's really frustrating. <laughs> I, I wish Rao would like give us. He we, basically Rao would have to give us either a rule or a list of every word we have and how it's supposed to be pronounced. There's a few we know how that we've heard pronounced. Other one, riven. Some of them are like gen speech when you're in the classroom. It's not right by proper Denise standards. <laughs> Rao hadn't fully uh, developed the language on that subject actually. Uh, in the back with my collection, I have this old mist calendar from like 1997 or so. And for November on the side there, it has this Dini text it's called Atrus's Prayer. It's Atrus praying to Yavo, the maker. The problem is, it's gibberish. We, we look at it, it just, it does not follow any of the rules of the Dini language. Unless we switch like this character for this character. What we think is that Rawa at some point after they published that, changed his mind about what symbols would represent what letter. And this was the first uh, Denis script example ever released. And it's wrong. It's so completely wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so we don't, there's a lot of things like that, uh, tense and other things that we don't have a lot of. Occasionally, Raul will give us some information. I tried to get a couple words out of him this year, but he's had some health problems and is on vacation, so he gets a free pass. But uh, he does give us some new stuff every now and then, and if more people show interest, I'm sure he would be more willing to do so. But if just one person randomly asks for something, sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. So, yeah. So, a question over here. More that like Rawa releases a new word, like 2007 Mysterium at, uh, in LA. Someone was in, on their computer in Cyan chat, and Rawa came into the chat room. And I said, it's Mysterium, can we have a, a new Denny word, please, please, please? So he said, oh, fine, and he flips out his dictionary, and he picked a word. <laughs> Yeah, that, that time anyway. Sometimes people, people ask for a specific word, like uh, just before Uru on uh, GameTap closed down, I asked him for a word to refer to the uh, the violent or re rebellious Baro, because some people were calling the evil Baro. And I just knew they were just angry or, you know, unhappy. And he gave me, the, he said that uh, Dr. Watson referred to them as the Baro Nekisal, which means the twisted or bent Baro. So occasionally something like that, a project or some useful word, he'll give them to us, but unfortunately not often enough. Any last minute questions about the Dini language or linguistics? Yes. Uh, we do have a word for warning. Years ago, I got Rawa to give me several words so I could make this wet floor sign that shows the falling man. And in the Denis script it says, Keshtav, Retogo Kenan Anowetz. Warning, the floor is wet. They still use it at Cyan. <laughs> it's awesome. You got a question? I know Raul has studied some languages, including Hebrew, so there's at least influence there, like adding the word uh or an and the word the onto the, f the next word is something you see in Hebrew. So there's a few things he's taking for that, a few things he's probably taking from other languages. So yeah, kind of unavoidable when you study other languages and then make one to draw influence. 
Any more questions? How do we not have the word for mist? Rawa, Rawa, are you on the live stream? <laughs> that would be a really good word to have. Even though it's spelled differently, the word for fog or mist would be awesome. <laughs> but no, we don't have that on board. We have the word for water, but not for mist. Any other questions? All righty. Well, that will be it for my presentation. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want uh, your name written in Denis on the Denis name tags you each got in your swag bags, I'd be happy to write that for you. And like I said, uh, make sure to check out the various resources if you'd like to learn more. So, Chavashem, Thee.